Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. Anambra State Deep Alive Bible Church, good morning. Overseers and pastors, good morning. Choir, good morning. All those people inside the hall, good morning. Now, those who are on the satellite, don't talk now. All those on the satellite, good morning. Now, Miracle morning. I said miracle morning. Powerful morning. All the load that the devil packed and put on your back today, put that thing down. Something on your head. Something at your back. Something in your tummy. We're going to release you. We're going to release ourselves from all the load of the devil this morning in Jesus' name. And so this morning, you're going to trust the Lord. Because it is miracle morning. Powerful morning. A glorious morning. You will never be the same in your life. The name of Jesus works wonders. The word of Jesus works wonders. And the blood of Jesus works wonders. That wonder this morning is coming upon your life. The great and glorious sacrifice of Jesus on the cross will drop something inside your heart. If you have never seen miracle, they all come there to say, miracle, miracle. Where is miracle? Right in front of you today. That place where you are. Are you there? Where is the one going to have miracle this morning? It's coming. I said it's coming. Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you because that power will never fail. The authority in the name. The power in the word. The possibilities of the blood of Christ will never fail. And therefore, this morning, Lord, I pray that that power will work effectually, effectively in Jesus' name. Your love will touch everyone. Your power covers every case. I we asking, Lord, this morning, that you will glorify the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Lord, walk wonders among your people. This morning, we have testimonies galore. Wonders innumerable. Healings uncountable. Touch everyone in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Wonderful. I love that Shanambra State. Amen. 
You can see that God bless everyone. I'm reading from Mark chapter 7, verse 37. Mark chapter 7, verse 37. And what beyond measure as Tony saying, he has done all things well. The people that encountered Jesus. The people that came to Jesus. The people that touched him. The people that believed in him. The people that came to him. At the end of their encounter with him. Here is what they said. They said, I'm surprised. The other one said, I am amazed. The other one said, we are astonished. Why? Because he has done all things well. In your life this day. In your family this day. In your business this day. In the, your labor this day. In your relatives. Everyone that you love, that loves you. Something good, something great, something glorious. It's going to come upon their lives. Because he will do all things well. This is going to be your testimony. He has done all things well. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8. It says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. If he did all things well at that time, and he's still the same today, and he has not changed, and he will never change today like yesterday, today like tomorrow today like forever every time you come to him every time you mention his name every time you believe in him he does all things well it's coming your way today i said it's coming your way today you will smile you will rejoice because that problem of a long standing period it is this morning that thing is going the devil that have been chasing you, driving you pursuing you this is the day that a stop will come to all that chasing in Jesus name The wonder of Christ's power. The wonder of God's power. It's unforgettable. It's extraordinary. It is supernatural. And it makes us to wonder that the problem that has been there for such a long time that in a twinkling of an eye with a single touch at the mention of the name of Jesus that everything vanishes away and then you become surprised amazed astonished you look at yourself say praise the Lord he has done all Things well. The wonder of Christ's power. There are three things we're going to talk about. As we talk about the wonder of Christ's power. Number one is name. 
Number two is blood. Number three is word. Number one is name. His name carries authority. That name is recognized in heaven and on earth. That name can confront and control any situation in your life. His name. Number two is blood. There's no blood like that blood. The blood of Jesus. It's not like the blood of Adam. The blood of Abel. The blood of Joshua. The blood of an animal. The blood of any sacrifice. The blood. Spotless blood. Perfect blood. The blood of the eternal son of God. The blood that washes and cleanses and purifies and purges. The blood that silences the devil. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. It's the blood that gives you victory. The blood that makes you triumphant. And I come to talk to you tonight, today, on his blood. Number three, his word. No word like that. It, it's a creative word. It's a supernatural word. He sends that word and he heals everyone. That word is coming to you this morning. I said that word is coming to you this morning. It will enter your ear. Spread it to your liver. Go to your kidney. Go to your intestine. Go to your brain. The word enters. Power will enter into you. Everything the devil has put there. Everything will be shaking out of your life. Three things. Number one, the possibilities of his name. The possibilities of his name. Number two, the pardon and the purity of his blood. The pardon and the purity in his blood. Number three, the power of his word. He wants to make you completely whole. Your spirit, your soul, your body. He gives salvation to your soul. Sanctification to your spirit. Healing and wholeness to your body. And today is the day. I said today is the day. Pardon and purity, healing and holiness. Blessing today and blessing tomorrow. Blessing on earth and the blessing that transfers you and takes you straight to heaven. The wonder of Christ's power. Number one, the possibilities of of his name is going to happen to you. Every good story I read, I read it for you. Every good thing that happens, that good thing will happen to you. You will never be the same again. That thing you saw on paper right there. And it said, unforgettable encounter with the God of wonders will wrote it just for you. What, happen, what happens to you, you will never forget. Acts of the Apostles chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 1. Now Peter and John went together, went up together, each of the temple at the hour of prayer being the nice hour. Yeah. 
And then he tells us in verse 2. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb. The man had the problem from birth. That's why we say, when Jesus is there, when the name of Jesus is mentioned, it doesn't matter whether the problem was there from birth, today is the day of your healing. And then we're told he was carried daily at the gate to the gate of a temple, which is called beautiful. To ask arms of them that entered into the temple. Who seen Peter and John about to go, about to enter into the temple, ask an arms of them. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him, said unto him, Look on us. Look on us. Why was Peter so confident? Why was Peter so sure? Look on us. Oh, because he knew the power in the name of Jesus. He knew the authority in the name of Jesus. If you knew that authority this morning, you will look up and catch your miracle. You will look up and catch your healing. And this man had never attended any retreat, any conference. I not studied the Bible on healing. This was the first time he was meeting Peter and John. And maybe you are there for the first time today. You say, I'm not part of them. Are you not part of them? You are not part of good people. Which part do you take? Now that you are there. Even though you are not part of them yesterday, now that you are there, I am part of them. Where are you? I said I'm part of them. Are you a stranger in the house of God? Are you a foreigner among the people of God? I am part of them. Where are you? The blessing will come upon your life. This man had not been part of them before. For the first time now, something good was going to happen to him. And then in verse 5, and he gave them heed. He paid attention to them, expecting to receive something of them. expecting to receive something of them. Your expectation will turn to realization. And Peter said, silver and gold have I none, such but such as I have give I thee in the name. That is it. In the name. That's it. That's the secret. That's the source. That is a very supernatural conveyor belt that brings miracle into your life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. The possibilities in that name is a name that Satan cannot conquer. It's a name that says the spirit cannot conquer. It's a name that sickness cannot resist. At the mention of the name of Jesus, Satan will bow. Sicknesses will leave. All those evil spirits, they will flee away from you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. 
And he took him by the right hand. You know, sometimes after we are finished praying, and I say at the last amen, the miracle is there. Those who have never experienced anything like that, they don't know what to do. The power is there. The healing is there. The supernatural contact is already there. But the man had never experienced anything like this. He had not seen Peter or John before. And when Peter said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. The man was still sitting there. And so Peter stretched forth the hand and took him by the hand. Not because it was only one person. And Peter and John were two people. It was easy for Peter to pray the prayer and also to lift him up by the hand. But because you are many, look at how many you are. When I give the authoritative word coming from Christ through my mouth. And I say in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. Because of the number, I cannot do like Peter and come to you there, lift you up, lift you up. It will take us more than one day. That's why we have the counselors there. And the counselor is standing by that person that is blind. Counselor standing by that person that is deaf or dumb. Counselor standing by that lame person. Counselor is by the side of that wheelchair. And when the word of power, the word of authority in the name of Jesus is sent forth. It's a counsel that was standing for me, what I could have done, what Peter did. He was told him by the hand, I said, brother, you're healed already. Sister, you're healed already. Take the, uh, take the step now. Rise up and walk. After we pray that the blind eyes should open, the name of Jesus cannot fail. That blind eye must open. I said the blind eyes must open. It's a counselor that will stand by there. I say, brother, the work is done. The miracle is performed. Open your eyes. Look at me here. You do that internally there. And then all of a sudden, the person will open eyes. When somebody is in a wheelchair, I will say, now the name of Jesus is conveying the miracle unto you. The power is there. It's the counselor to say, did you hear? You've got it. You've got it. If he agrees with you, if two of you shall agree, if you two of you shall agree, the counselor and the sick person and the infirm person and me here already, I believe in that name. You believe in that name. We believe in that name together. You tell him, get up, he'll get up. And he took him by the right hand and he lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up, walked, entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Our time has come. 
I said our time has come. It is coming your way in Jesus' name. How did Peter have such confidence in the name of Jesus? John chapter 14 verse 12. John chapter 14 verse 12. Here is what gives you confidence. Here is what gives you expectation. Here is what brings realization to your life. John 14 verse 12. It says, very late, very late, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall do. And greater work than this shall he do, because I go to the Father. And whatsoever, and whatsoever, and whatsoever, Ye shall ask in my name. Whatsoever ye shall ask, blind eyes to be opened. Whatsoever ye shall ask, the lame to rise up and walk. Whatsoever ye shall ask, the weak to become strong. Whatsoever ye shall ask, the barren to have children. Whatsoever ye shall ask, HIV is to clear away from there and to vanish away. Whatsoever you shall ask, madness and insanity to get out from there immediately. Whatsoever you shall ask, your deformed child, your malformed child to get well completely. Whatsoever you shall ask, for the Lord to correct that operation they did. And then when they did the operation, something went wrong. And the correction on that operation is coming this morning. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that I will do. That I will do. The Lord is going to do it this morning. God will be glorified in your life. He brought you here. So you can do wonders in your life. An unforgettable wonder in your life. It is happening. I said it is happening. I see it already in my mind's eye. I see that lame person rising up and walking. I see those crutches being dropped away. See, I see that blind man there, his eyes opening today. I see the one that is having that dysentery. Now everything will stop. All that blood hemorrhage in your life, that blood will stop today. I see it already. Look at that fiber. God is taking it away. Because whatsoever, 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 ye shall ask in my name, I will do it. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. Number one, the possibilities of his name. Number two, there are people that say, I know why God is not answering my prayer. I'm bad. I'm a bad person. I know why God is not answering my prayer. I've done this. I've done this. I've done that. And every time I want to pray, the devil will say, shut up. You're guilty. Shut up. You are dirty. Shut up. You are condemned. People are praying, and you of all people, you are praying to. Now the devil has been telling you to shut up. You are going to turn around and tell the devil, shut up. Tell him. I said, tell him. Satan, shut up. He will 
forgive all your sins. You don't have to be carrying condemnation because there is pardon in his blood. He forgives. Not only that he pardons, he purifies through the blood. What does that mean? He will forgive you. Then he will take the pollution, the perversion, the defilement, and the remembrance of that sin. He'll take it away from your mind, take it away from your heart. He pardons, he purifies. So that when Satan comes to say, you are a sinner. No, you, you, you don't just accept what somebody says. You are a man and somebody says, you are a woman. You say, come, don't go. Prove it to me. Tell me why. You know, you are a doctor and somebody says, you are a primary school teacher. Don't allow them to just call you by any name. Say, come, don't go yet, come. You don't see chalk and dust in my hand. Who do you think I am? You are what you call yourself. You are not what Satan calls you. You are not what your neighbors calls you. You are not what anybody calls you. Jesus says, I will forgive your sin. He says, I will pardon you. He says, I will purify you. Once he has purified you, if Satan then comes and he says, you are a sinner, you say, get out of my way. You don't know what you are talking about. I settled that at Calvary. Look at 1 John chapter 1. 1 John chapter 1. I'm reading to you here now, and I'm reading from verse 9 first. Then I'm going to get back to verse 5. All through to verse 7. Look at 1 John chapter 1 verse 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Can you look up for a moment? Somebody offended you. And then he came to you. He said, my friend, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I said this, I did this. I knew you knew and it hurt you. I'm sorry. And, he, and then you replied, that's all right, my friend. I forgive. It's all over. It's not in my mind again. You can go. Then he comes again the following Sunday. He says, my friend, forgive me. You know, you say, watch now. That, what, that thing I told you last Sunday. And you said, you forgive me. Please, forgive me. I, I thought we settled that. Please, you are forgiven. We have settled it. He comes next Sunday again. He said, I've been looking for you. Please. Please. And then begins to cry. Say, my friend, what's the problem? Please forgive me. I thought we settled that two, three Sundays ago. And I told you I forgive you. My friend, you are the one that have not forgiven yourself. You come to church on Sunday. Oh God, forgive me. I have done what I shouldn't have done. I have not done what I should have done. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
Then you come the following Sunday again. God, I'm a sinner. Please forgive me. I have done what I shouldn't have done. I have not done what I should have done. Hey, my child, I thought we'll settle that the other day. You're forgiven. God so loved you that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Now you are forgiven. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. And then you come the following Sunday again. They say, if you want forgiveness, raise up your hand. You raise up your hand again. They say, confess and pray. Then you begin to say, God, I'm a sinner. Please forgive me. And the Lord says, what are you talking about? I thought we settled that the other time. It is settled. Once you tell the Lord. Once you confess to the Lord. Forgive me. Change my life. I believe in Jesus. Salvation comes. Forgiveness comes. And that salvation will be in your heart. You will live by it in Jesus' name. Look at verse 7. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with him. After we are saved, after he pardons us, after he forgives us, we're not enemies. He's our father. We're his children. Jesus is our savior. We are the saved, redeemed people. He has reconciled us with the Father. He is not opposed to us. We are not opposed to him. Now we are walking in the light. The word of God is the light. The gospel is the light. The truth is the light. The instruction of the Bible, that is the light. If we walk in the light... As he is in the light, then it says we have fellowship with, with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us. Tell me the rest. Tell me out loud. Cleanses us from all sin. There's pardon. There's purity. I said there is pardon. And there is purity. All through the blood of Jesus Christ. That blood can cleanse any sin, every sin. That blood will set you free. And the cord of sin that bound you. Every sin will be totally taken away. And we don't have to repeat, repeat, repeat. As if God is a long touch. God is so willing to forgive. He's so willing to pardon. He's so willing to purify. That the moment you desire it and demand for it. That moment he gives it to you. He says your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. And as you believe that, the joy of salvation will well up in your heart. And then, as you come to him to purify you, the reality of sanctification will be so clear and definite in your life. He does it by his grace. He does it in his power. It is for you today. Give me a good and number said, Amen. Amen. Look at Psalm 103. Psalm 103. Verse 12. As far as the east is from the west, 
so far as he removed our transgressions from us. As far as the east from the west. What's he talking about? West in Nigeria, east in Nigeria, they are far apart. But that's not, it's not far enough. West Africa, East Africa, they are far, far apart. But that's not what he's talking about. He's talking about the west of the earth and the east of the earth. As you look at that horizon very far, look at this horizon very far. As the west is far from the east, so as he removed our transgressions away from us. That's his love. That's what the blood of Jesus can do. You know, when something is so far like that, you cannot reach out your hand and take them anymore. Your thoughts cannot even travel as far to look for them anymore. He pardons, he purifies. He'll take all the remembrance of your sin away from you, even today in Jesus' name. The possibilities of his name. The pardon and the purity in his blood. The power of his word. That's what is coming to you already. The power of his word. I said that word is coming to you already. Matthew chapter 8. And I'm reading from verse 5. Matthew chapter 8 verse 5. When Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion pleading with him, asking him, praying to him, beseeching him. And saying, Lord, my servant lies at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. The servant was having a combination of sickness, physical sickness, and uh, spiritual torment. It was a combination of disease and demons. Disease, that's the sickness. And demons, those ones cause the torment grievously, sorely, terribly tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. And Jesus says unto you, he knows where you are there, I will come to you and heal you. I thought an number said you'll say, Amen. It's coming your way. I said, it's coming your way. Where are you there? I said, where are you there? Don't look, don't look that way. Look at me here. Healing is coming to you. I said, healing is coming to you. Deliverance is coming to you. I praise the Lord this morning. He will touch you where you are. He will get to you where you are. And so the centurion said, don't even bother to come to my house. I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. But speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Why did that man say that? He said, speak the word only, my servant shall be healed. Remember, the man was a centurion. 
Century means 100 years. When you have one dollar, there are 100 cents, cents in one dollar. A centurion is the captain and the leader of 100 soldiers. And now he begins to share his own experience. He says in verse 9, for I'm a man under authority, having soldiers 100 under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goeth, and to another come, and he cometh, and to my servant do this, and he doeth each. He said, I have 100 soldiers. I control them with the word. I don't hold them. I don't push them. I don't draw them. I don't do anything. I just stand where I stand. And because I have authority, any one of those 100 soldiers, some of them tall, some of them short, some of them big, some of them small. Some of them long, long standing. Some of them new recruits. It doesn't matter who they are. All that 100 I have authority over them. And I say, go, he goes. And I say, come, and he comes. He said, Jesus I have authority over soldiers. You have authority over sickness. I have authority over soldiers. You have authority over spirits. I have authority over all the 100. You have authority over 100% of all sicknesses. You have authority over 100% of all, of all spirits. I say go. He has to go. You say go. Sickness has to go. You say go. Evil spirit has to go. When Jesus says go, this morning your problem has to go. It doesn't matter the name. Doesn't matter how long standing. Doesn't matter the shape. Doesn't matter the medical report. When Jesus says go, that infirmity will go. Where are you? I said that infirmity will go. And so Jesus said, this is great faith. And then in verse 13, and Jesus said unto the centurion, go thy way as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the cell same hour. His servant was healed in the cell. Same hour. And my sister is healed in the cell. Same hour. And my brother, you are healed in this cell. Same hour. My boy, my daughter there, you are healed in this cell. Same hour. Anyone, everyone, healing is coming to you. Deliverance is coming to you. Freedom, freedom, freedom. You've got it. You've got it. You get it, you are sitting down. You've got it. I said you've got it. Miracle for you today. Healing for you today. Deliverance for you today. It's in the name. It's in the name. It's in the name. In the name of Jesus.
Open your mouth and tell the Lord. Thank the Lord. If there's any guilt there, just tell the Lord. Lord, I'm sorry. That finalizes it. If you feel that you are impure, you have not been purified by the blood of Jesus. Just say, Jesus, here I am. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth me from all, all unrighteousness. Believe the Lord, it's done. Believe the Lord, it's done. Let me hear a great amen. That's where we're going to start. You want the Lord to pardon every sin. And we're not going to, you're not going to be raising up your hand forever, forever, forever. You want this to be that final time. That you say, Lord, now I understand. When you forgive, you forgive, you forget. You take my seas away as far as the west is from the east. I now accept it and receive it finally. So raise up your hand. And also, if you need, no, you need to be purified, sanctified, made holy. Because he purifies us too. Through his blood, it's available now. You raise up your hand, it will be done. I'm waiting for you. Where are you there? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because you are faithful God. If we confess our sins, you are faithful, you are just to forgive and to cleanse us from all our righteousness. I pray for everyone asking for forgiveness now. Forgive them in Jesus' name. And those in impurity of heart, Holiness of heart. Sanctification in their nature. Lord, I pray, purify them now. Sanctify them, Lord. I thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Wonderful amen. Wonderful amen. Wonderful amen. Now, if you've done that just for the first time, that now I am forgiven. And Satan cannot open his big mouth against you anymore. Say, you're a sinner, you're a sinner, you're a sinner. <laughs> you say, Satan, shut up. I have settled that case with Jesus, my Lord and Savior. And if you raise up your hand for that pardon, for that forgiveness, you raise up your hand for that salvation in Christ. Our counselors and members of the choir, the ushers and workers, they are coming to you now. Just put up that hand. Say, yes, I am here. I'm so happy I am saved. I'm so happy my sins are forgiven. And I will not uh, go again, uh, you know, tomorrow or another time. Raising up my hands again because now I know it is done. I, and, and you know that miracle is still coming your way. This is going to be the morning of miracle. Where are you? I said miracle is coming your way. Be getting ready now. Expectation, expectation. Expecting to receive something this morning. Realization will come. Madness will vanish away. All that swelling in your body, everything will vanish away. It's going to send the word of power unto you. And that person of the wheelchair there, counselors don't leave. When you finish taking the name, stay there. You hold them by the hand. They get up. They will walk. They will run. They will leave. They will praise the Lord. This money is coming. This money is coming. The name has power. Its word has power. 
Counselors are waiting for you. Finish very quickly now. Counselors are taking the names now. You, you are so happy you give the right information. You are so happy you say, my sins are forgiven. I feel the peace in my soul. I have the joy in my spirit. I am saved. I am saved. It's like a burden of guilt is lifted away from me. See, I am free. Free from the chains of sin. I'm free from the bondage of my transgression. Jesus has set me free. That's why you put on your name cheerfully, joyfully, happily. So put my name down. I want my name on record. That I am saved. Now, counselors, I think you should be finishing by now. If you wrote your name yesterday, don't bother to write the name again. The name is there already. The uh, head of uh, counselors, or, you know, let us know when you finish. And give those uh, papers back to the central place as we have been taught and trained. And counselors, don't leave there when you finish taking down the names. Because you will be like Peter, stretching for the hand to them after the final amen. And then they begin to rise up and walk. Counselors, the people are waiting. They are eager. But write properly, write legibly. And those of us who are waiting, are you going to receive something this morning? I said, anybody receiving miracle there this morning? Be thinking about how you are going to give your testimony. And uh, those of you, you are still lame, be thinking about how you will get up, how you will walk, how you will walk majestically here and come to the stage and say, praise the Lord, my name is. Be thinking about how you'll do it now. Counselors who are watching. Are we through now? Pastor Overseer, help me. Them. Are they, are they finished? They are finished. As them, they, they hear your voice more than they hear my own. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Are you through? Say, eh. Amen. Now it is coming. I said, now it is coming. Your weakness will be turned to strength. I give a word of command in the name of Jesus. That name will never fail. That word will never fail. If you need a healing, if you need a miracle, if you need supernatural strength, you just raise up your hand when you hear the final amen. Counselors who are there, you will look at them, tell them to do what they have not been able to do before. Miracle is there already. Are we ready? Father, in the name of Jesus, we well, thank you at this time. Your word will never fail. The blood that flowed from Calvary will never fail. The name of Jesus will never fail. I come in that name. I come in the power of the blood. I come in the authority of that word. I command you sickness. I command you sickness. Come out in Jesus' name. That is sanity. Those demons those evil spirits 
causing torment in that place, causing torture in that place, causing madness in that place. I command you, come out in Jesus' name. All that pain, all the plague, all the sickness, all the disease in your body, I command right now, come out in Jesus' name. That cancer, all those cancer germs, all those cancer cells, dry up right now. In the name of Jesus, be healed. Also, I command you, be healed in Jesus' name. Pile, be healed in Jesus' name. All that leprosy, itching of the hand, itching of the toes, I command right now, be healed in Jesus' name. And I pray that all the parts of the body that have been eaten up by that disease, there be a replacement now. Lord, perform the miracle in Jesus' name. I pray for those who have HIV AIDS and any other incurable disease. Lord, in your power. Lord, in your love. Lord, in your glory. Touch them now. Heal them now. Deliver them now. Set them free in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for those who are buried. By this next year, they'll carry their miracle children. Confirm each in Jesus' name. Those blind eyes there. The Lord is by your side right now. His name and his word. His power and his authority comes to you right now. Those blind eyes, I command you, be opened in Jesus' name. Those who have stroke, one leg shorter than the other, or pain of arthritis, or paralysis, lameness, or those who had accidents, and your crutches or wheelchair, I send for the power. I send for the power. I send for the power unto you. Rise up and walk in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that your supernatural power will touch everyone right now. Heal them. Deliver them. Perform the miracle. Let there be a manifestation right now. Everywhere now, to my right, miracle. In my front, miracle. At the far back, miracle. In the hall there, miracle. Far the gate over there, miracle. On my left hand side here, miracle. Miracle everywhere. Healing everywhere. Deliverance everywhere. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It is done in Jesus' name. Well, thank you, Father, because we know it's done. In Jesus' name we pray. It has happened. It has happened. It has happened. Check up yourself. Check up yourself. It is done. It is done. Praise the Lord.